That's right. Today's video is what is acceleration? And of course, acceleration is when you're speeding up, slowing down, or changing your direction, or simply put, when your velocity is changing over time. Now, we're going to go over that in much greater detail in just a moment, but please don't forget before you get started to subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science, down there in the lower right-hand corner. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Subscribe, notifications, bell, give me a comment, give me a thumbs up, and share this video. Now, if you would like some additional help with acceleration or any other physics topics, then you can simply go to my Teachers Pay Teachers store. I have notes there, additional problems that you can work on with all the solutions, and all of that is available at my Teachers Pay Teachers store, and you can link to that in the description below. Okay, but let's get started. What is acceleration? Acceleration is simply your rate of change of velocity. If your velocity is changing over time, then you are accelerating. And your acceleration tells you how fast your velocity is changing over time, along with the direction of that change. Okay, now please don't forget, acceleration is a vector quantity, which means it must be described by its magnitude and its direction. You have to have a number and a direction. And the metric units for acceleration are meters per second squared. Second squared. Now, some people have a hard time. What does that mean, meters per second squared? Well, you are in luck because I made a whole video simply about what is meant by meters per second squared. And really all that means is that your velocity, which is units, meters per second, is changing over time per second. So it's like meters per second per second. But check out that video. Okay, now we could write down like, for example, you have an acceleration of three meters per second squared in the positive direction. That means like if you were starting from rest when your acceleration was, excuse me, when your velocity was zero meters per second and you have an acceleration of three meters per second squared, that means after one second, you would have a velocity, you would be going with a velocity of three meters per second. After two seconds, it would be six. After three, nine, and after four seconds, because three times four is 12, then you would be moving with a velocity of 12 meters per second. Now, here's some examples of how we can kind of write down acceleration. We might write A for acceleration is equal to three meters per second squared. Now, you might be saying, well, that's the magnitude. Well, where is the direction? Well, the direction is implied because this is a positive number and that means the acceleration is in the positive direction. You could put a plus three out here just for emphasis, but usually we don't do that. You could also be accelerating in the negative direction. All right, and that you would, could write down as acceleration is equal to minus 0 0.87 meters per second squared, for example. Or you could write down something like acceleration is equal to 1.24 meters per second to the left, or to the right, or to up, or down, or north, south, east, west. But usually, in math and physics, we stick with positive and negative. Okay? We say to the left is negative, just like on a math coordinate system. To the right is positive, up is positive, and down is negative. Okay. Now, this is how we calculate acceleration. We've got to do some calculations. This is physics. This is the average acceleration. This bar means it's the average acceleration. As the definition said, the Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity over time. This triangle here is the Greek letter delta. It means the change in the velocity, and t is time. So your velocity is changing over time, and therefore you would be accelerating. Now, when we calculate acceleration, we have to get the rate of change of the velocity. Well, the change in the velocity is always the final velocity minus the initial. It has to be final minus initial, so you get the correct sign, positive or negative. It's not initial minus final. And it's not just the difference of the two, it's always final minus initial, because if you're slowing down or speeding up, you're going to get a negative or a positive answer, depending on what you're doing. Okay, and it's over time now. 4A is obviously stands for acceleration, that's measured in meters per second squared, that's the metric unit. The final velocity, initial velocity is meters per second, and T is time in seconds, like that, okay? That's the equation we use to calculate the average acceleration. Now, there are three ways, three things you can do to accelerate. You can speed up, you can slow down, or you can change your direction. Now, all of those are acceleration because all of those are changing velocity. Velocity is also a vector quantity, and if you're changing your velocity over time, then you're accelerating. Now, the last one, number three here, 
It's this what, what the most common example is if you're going around in a circle and you have a constant speed, you're always going at the same speed, but you're going around in a circle, you're always changing your direction, so you're always accelerating. Because remember, acceleration is a vector quantity and it's defined by its magnitude and direction. Okay? Now, if your velocity is changing, then you're accelerating. If your velocity is not changing, then you're not accelerating. Same thing. If you're, if you're accelerating, then your velocity must be changing. If you're not accelerating, then your velocity is not changing. All right? It's a rate of change of velocity. Okay, now let's talk about what it means to be speeding up or slowing down. The speeding up or slowing down depends on which way you're going and which way you're accelerating. If you're speeding up, that means the velocity vector and the acceleration vector point in the same direction. It has to be pointing in the same direction because they're like add it, adding up. All right, that's why I kind of think. It. Now, if you have a positive velocity, there's your own mobile, your mobile home there, your motor home there, and the motor home is going to the right, which we kind of say is positive. So you have a positive velocity and a positive acceleration, then that object would be speeding up, okay, increasing its velocity, speeding up. Now, you could be doing that in any direction as long as the velocity vector and the acceleration vector are pointing in the same direction. Now, here I have right and left. It could be both be pointing up and both be pointing down or whatever direction, it doesn't matter. Okay, so this is like if you have a positive velocity and a positive acceleration when you do your calculations, then the object is speeding up. If you have a negative velocity and a negative acceleration, then it's also speeding up. It's just speeding up in the negative direction. Remember we talked about in the last video, negative velocity does not mean slowing down. Negative velocity means you're going in a negative direction. The sign of the velocity is the direction of motion of the object. Okay, now, if they're both pointing in the same direction, you're speeding up. Well, that's right. If they're both pointing in opposite directions, or if they are pointing in opposite directions, that means you're slowing down. Okay? If the velocity vector and the acceleration vector point in opposite directions. Okay? So, for example, if you have your spaceship, and the spaceship is going to the left, which we often say is the negative direction, but it's accelerating to the right in the positive direction, then the thing is slowing down. All right. Once again, negative velocity does not mean slowing down. It just means it's going in the negative direction. Okay. And if you were to calculate the acceleration and it's going in the negative direction and slowing down, then you should have a positive uh, acceleration. Okay. If you have negative velocity, slowing down, positive acceleration. Okay. So once again, uh, we have this uh, guy who's rowing his little boat here, and he's going in the positive direction, but he's slowing down. Then, for he's going to have a negative acceleration. Okay. I think that kind of makes sense, both in the same direction, accelerating, speeding up, in opposite directions, slowing down. Okay, now we have some excellent examples for how to calculate acceleration. Now this says a race car starts from rest and uniformly accelerates to the right until it reaches a velocity of 45 meters per second. Now you can see it starts from rest, it's going to the right, which is the positive direction, it's speeding up, therefore the, the acceleration has to be positive. Okay, so we can check and see. If this change occurs over 6.4 seconds, what's the average acceleration of the car? Well, here's our equation. We don't really care what the car was doing, the race car was doing between the final and initial. Okay, this is the average acceleration. We just need to know the final and the initial. And that means the average acceleration is the final velocity, which in this case is 45. All right, and it occurred, and the initial was zero, and that means the time was 6.4. It doesn't mean the time is 6.4. And then you get an average acceleration of 7 meters per second squared. Now, if the car was slowing down from 45 to 0 and going in the positive direction, okay, then you would get a negative velocity, you get a negative acceleration because then these two values would be switched. And it would be 0 minus 45. Slowing down, the final is 0, starting at 45, and you get a negative answer. Okay, so it's important that you have the right sign. All right. All right. Okay, so now we can go on with example number two. Example number two says that we have an express train, and it's moving to the left and approaching the city center, and as it does so, it's going to decrease its velocity from 110 kilometers per hour to 39 kilometers per hour. It does that over a time of 12.5 seconds. And we want to know what is the average acceleration of the train over that time, and it says here that the answer should be given in meters per second squared. Well, you'll notice here that the velocities are given kilometers per hour and kilometers per hour. We net, well, the easiest thing to do would be to first just convert those kilometers per hour to meters per second. 
we have started off with the initial velocity is minus 110 kilometers per hour. Now it says here the train is moving to the left. And usually, like on a math coordinate system, to the left is negative and to the right is positive. So I put down here minus 110 kilometers per hour. We're going to do this in two steps. We're going to convert the kilometers first because we know that one kilometer is 1,000 meters. So we can cancel our kilometers. And we know that one hour is 3,600 seconds. So then we can cancel our hours. Uh, this is one of our conversion factors. And this is the other. So if all I do is take minus 110, multiply it by 1,000, Divide it by 3,600 that I will get that the initial velocity in meters per second is thir minus 30.6. I can do that for the final velocity is, uh, is minus 39 kilometers per hour. I multiply it by 1,000 again, divide by 3,600, and I get that the final velocity is minus 10,8 meters per second. Now, I have all of my information here that I need for my equation. Initial velocity, final velocity, and the time. I can just plug the values in. Don't forget it's final minus initial. And I did this problem like this because I want to see this is a minus 10, comma 8, and then it's minus. This is this minus is this minus, and then this is negative right here because it's the uh, initial velocity is minus 30, comma 6 meters per second divided by 12.5. So remember a minus and a minus, which of course a minus and a minus and a plus, and then we end up with a positive answer of 1.58 meters per second. The answer is positive because the train is traveling in the negative direction. The minus on the velocity sign is just the direction of motion. If it's traveling in the negative direction, it's slowing down, then the acceleration must be positive. Okay, so like I just said, the train is traveling in the negative direction, it's slowing down, therefore the acceleration must be in the opposite direction or the positive direction. Okay, that is number two, and now we can go on and do number three. Now, this is Susie. She's riding her bicycle along the street when she has an initial velocity of 8.7 meters per second, and suddenly she notices that chompers, chompers, the dog is chasing her, and to avoid getting bitten by chompers, she accelerates at a rate of 1.5 meters per second squared, acceleration, uh, for four seconds, and we want to know what is her final speed after doing that acceleration. Now, You'll want to know what our final speed or final velocity is. This is the final velocity. This equation did not solve the final velocity, so we got to rearrange this equation to solve for the final velocity. Now, the first thing we can do to get rid of this t or to move this t over to the other side is we do the opposite because this is divided by t, so we multiply it by t, and that cancels the t on the right-hand side, and on the left-hand side, we're just left with a times t equals v final minus v initial. Now, we want to solve for this final velocity, so we have a minus velocity initial so we're going to do the opposite and we're going to add the velocity initial to both sides it will therefore cancel each other out on the right hand side and we're left that the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus a times t all right and that's the equation we can use and we know the initial velocity is 8.7 we know that her acceleration is 1.5 and she does that for four seconds and you can see if she's going to be accelerating for four seconds at 1.5 meters per second squared. I think that it's going to be a change in the velocity. This part of it right here is going to be six seconds and then plus her original velocity. And we're left that her final velocity is 14.7 meters per second. Okay, so there you go. I think that was a pretty good explanation of uh, uh, what acceleration is. We went over a kind of a, a explanation did some kind of um, like uh, conceptual examples, and then we did three nice calculations. So you should have a good understanding now what velocity, excuse me, what acceleration is. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all of the five following things. You should subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science. Please support my channel. You can give me a thumbs up. You can leave a comment. You can share this video with all of your friends and click the notifications bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.